Have you ever looked at your PC and wondered when the right time was to upgrade? Well, in this video, I've taken a break from the editing series. You'll see that next week. I'm going to be shedding some light on when you should upgrade your PC and whether you should wait for Polaris or Pascal. Bam, how's that for unpredictable? So right now, I'm going to start by clearing up a lot of bullshit before I get onto the points. First of all, you don't need to upgrade every year or even replace your system entirely. The beauty of PC is that you can replace pretty much whatever you want when you want. You'll find that most people do tend to upgrade a single part every three years or so. Heck, a lot of my friends still use a 750Ti or an R9270X. I recently upgraded for my HD 6670, which is a super old card, and I'll get onto that now. What I'm trying to say with this is that you do need to buy the top of the line stuff and go shelling out a ton of money every year for a new part. You really don't have to. Now for my first point, the purpose of a system and what do you actually need to upgrade. Since I am talking about PCs in general, you should look at upgrading the graphics card, the CPU, or even the RAM. PCs are really simple, but there's a lot to know. For Java-based games like Minecraft, it's basically just CPU intensive, with the GPU focusing on mods. Similarly, simulator games are also heavily CPU based, so just think about that. In this case, it may be a good idea to separate your CPU, whereas for most other games like COD, Battlefield, CSGO, League, and the majority of other games, they're mostly GPU or graphics card intensive. So while it's a good idea to have a good balance between a good CPU and a good GPU, for the majority, you should look into upgrading your GPU, if that's actually what you want to do. If you're focusing more on video editing, look into upgrading your CPU and having enough RAM to perhaps upgrade the CPU and stepping up to 16 gigs of RAM may be a really viable option. But if you're the average gamer, you're never going to need that. So for what you should look at upgrading, I've actually made a brief list which is on screen now on what you should focus on. Now for Java games and editing, look into upgrading the CPU before anything else. And if you're playing games at all, including simulators, look into upgrading the GPU or graphics card. Now unless you're editing, you don't really need more than 8 gigs of RAM at the moment. And these are only a few things you should consider before you upgrade. Now the next is going to be the question of dependencies in the context of, is the component depend on other components? And whilst it isn't a problem with upgrading a GPU, you should know that if you're upgrading the CPU and it's on a different socket, you might have to buy a different motherboard. The same can be said for RAM. If you're making the jump from Haswell or an older generation like Sandy Bridge and you're moving up to X99 or Skylake, you will have to get DDR4 RAM as well, as your DDR3 RAM is incompatible. In most cases, I really wouldn't worry about this too much as long as you're mindful of it because chances are P would do like to upgrade to the same socket. Like stepping up from the i5-4690K to the i7-4790K. They're both in the same LG-1150 socket and they both use DDR3 RAM. So you won't have to upgrade the motherboard or the RAM, which will save you money. And the other question is when you're upgrading your GPU, and that's can your power supply deliver enough wattage to your GPU? But a lot of the time you've got enough headroom anyway. If you get a lower tick card like the 750Ti, GTX 950 or R7 70 you should be fine, but again, it's something to be mindful of. Personally, I like to have a little bit of headroom for when I want to add more features. And now I'm not saying go out and buy a 1000 watt PSU to put back into your system. For PC part picker, if you put all your parts on that, it will tell you how much watts your system will use on load, and then you can make a good call on whether you need to upgrade the power supply as well as the GPU. Now the next one I won't really cover, that's bottlenecking and stupid matches. Now if you want to get a really powerful graphics card, say like a Titan 980 Ti, something around that, if you have an i3 or an AMD quad core or hex core, then you should really focus on making sure there aren't any limitations on your components. Because one part may be so much better than the other one. Bottlenecking is often a thrown around term, but it's less common than you actually think. And if you have an i3, then you should be fine with a GPU like the GTX 950, R7 70 pushing it a little with the GTX 960 or R9 But chances are these are the GPUs that most people buy anyway. But if you want an R9 390 going up to a 980 Ti, then an i5 should be able to handle that no problem. Again, consider whether the GPU is a lot more powerful than the CPU, and vice versa. You can't have a GPU bottleneck a CPU, I don't think. But for a gaming rig, it's a really stupid match to buy a £150 GPU and a £300 CPU. It just doesn't make any sense. Additionally, you want to ask yourself the question of whether it's something you need versus one. Do you need an upgrade, or do you want one? For example, I started with a HD 6670, and I found that I could play titles like CSGO and Black Ops 2 at low settings, because at the time I was primarily a console player, and still get a good frame rate. And to be honest, it didn't bother me so much, but as we see in my top 5 monitors list, Black Ops 3 absolutely raped my GPU. Like, no way in hell was I going to play on that. So I made the call to upgrade for 1080p, 144Hz, and I could have gone with something like a 390 or 980, but 980i was more of what I wanted. You should consider the resolution and frame rate you want to play at before you buy a new GPU and upgrade. You know, are you getting a decent experience with a current setup, or is it time to buy your upgrade? For most people, you'll be fine with turning some settings down from ultra to high or even medium to get a really solid frame rate, and if that's the case, 
then you might not need an upgrade. And whilst I'm loving the pretty pictures that I get from Ultra from playing on my card, I can say that I wasn't rolling the floor crying or having a stroke when I used to play on low. It's all to do with what you expect the performance to be like, and if you expect something higher, then you'll have to have enough money to afford the upgrade. Now the next point is that question of new versus second hand. For the most part, you want to be careful when buying used, especially on eBay, Craigslist, and Gumtree. And you want to make sure there's some sort of collateral to fall back onto if things go tits up. eBay has some sort of buy protection, so I'm sure you'll be fine, and especially if you buy from a reputable seller. And buying an older generation second hand, or the newest generation second hand, is a great way to upgrade perhaps your even older hardware. So if you want to upgrade a GPU like the 750Ti to a card similar to the R9 380, just stop. A lot of the generations perform very similar to the older card with a number above it. For Nvidia and for AMD, it's just the last generation. I'll give you some examples. The GTX 780Ti came out before the 970, but it still performs better or on par. It doesn't perform as well as the 980, but you see that going with a 780Ti, so 80 on the end, and stepping it down to a new generation, 70 on the end, it still performs roughly the same. Now with AMD, you will be pushed to find a concerning difference between the R9 290 and the R9 390, a new generation of course. So say you're planning to upgrade to the R9 380, did you know that it's basically just an updated and refined R9 285? And the older R9 280X, which is literally £50 to £75 cheaper, second hand because it is a lot older, will perform better. So ask yourself if you want to upgrade, do you need to get the newest generation or can you go for an older one? Next, I'm going to be giving a few tips out there to increase performance, and that's if you've managed to stick this far. If you find your PC being really slow, look into getting system care programs like advanced system care, just to make sure you disable all of the open candy checkboxes upon installation, and things like CC Cleaner. Now with these programs, you can delete all the old files clogging up your precious hard drive or SSD space, and deleting these things will actually make your browser and other programs run better. They will just help with the maintenance of your system. Plus, with other softwares like Avast or Free of Course, you can get rid of nasty viruses and <laughs> programs which slow down your PC by being heavy on system resources. With programs like this, you can set startup items like update managers and the rest to disable to make boot times faster and a bunch of other cool sh <laughs> If your PC is slowing you down but you don't want to upgrade your RAM, look into taking care of it like you would do with a car. It works well when you let it do its thing, but every so often you have to maintenance it. It's all part of the process and it is free and it will only take you about 5-10 to 10 minutes a week or month depending on how often you do it. With this portion of the video we move on to the Should you wait for Pascal Polaris GPUs? Now if you didn't know, Polaris is what AMD is calling their soon to be released GPUs and the Nvidia version of that is Pascal. Now I could go on about specs but we don't know that for certain yet and some of the things we know is that due to a node shrink we can either expect 40 nanometer or 60 nanometer chips which probably means more efficiency, better performance per watt, yada yada yada. And you want to know how it performs and whether it's worth delaying your entire build or upgrade for this new line of GPUs. The thing is with performance you see around the internet, besides floating point performance and other specs that I probably haven't even seen yet, we know they're going to be a lot better for both parties, but to what extent? Now I think they'll be good, but for Nvidia and AMD they'll probably try and milk it, and so don't expect too much of a performance boost immediately. They'll be saving that for the later cards and in several years to come. Heck, up until this point we thought that they would integrate the new HBM memory, but apparently is this going to be GDDR5X for some of them? What we're trying to say with this is we don't know to be honest and a lot of the stuff you'll see on the internet is purely speculative. Now with that said there's also a lot of speculation on when they're going to be released. Now I have to agree with Colt of Mission on this and I reckon that Nvidia will be around May to June right before the summer and AMD is going to be in the third quarter of the year. So somewhere around July to September. This was suggested by WCCF Tech and reported by PCR Online but if that's the case you should definitely wait for Pascal Polaris. The reason is because you'll only be waiting a few months or so and you'll not only have the opportunity to witness a significant price drop in GPUs, probably mostly second hand on eBay, and people will sell their old cards like the AMD 300 series or the Nvidia 900 series, which is still the current generation right now, and for a lot cheaper. What we can expect from these opening sales are three things. One, it is probably going to be more expensive than a similar performing older hardware, and that's because it's the new lineup. Two, they might become sold out and supply limitations are often a problem, as I remember with the AMD Fury. So what happens then? Do you wait longer to get a sold out GPU to get back into stock? Or do you just upgrade? And three, flagship cards will be released later. It happens with all generations. Take the 770, it was released in May 2013 with the 780 Ti being released under five and a half months later. And the 970, yeah, that came out in September 2014. And the 980 Ti, which I guess isn't really their flagship, but it's the higher end 900 card, came out just under eight and a half months later. And that's for you patiently minded people. If you're doing alright with the system right now, maybe hold off a bit until the newer GPUs are released. 
But the other angle of looking at things by going balls out and buying a system now. Truth be told, there's no definitive answer and depends how deep your pockets are and whether you can afford it either way. I do not recommend waiting another 10 months to a year to upgrade to a potential 1080 Ti, especially since it's going to be most likely reference. So you are probably going to have to be waiting another bit to they release MSI, Gigabyte and EVGA cards. Postponing an upgrade if you're struggling to find the money is a good idea, but you're forgetting that you could be playing games right now very well and happily. Who cares if it's not the newest? If you're worried about inferior hardware or being left out, don't be. Devs aren't going to magically make their games run on other hardware that isn't Polaris or Pascal. Most of you will still have older cards and will have that. So for some final words, buy your system and enjoy it. If you need one for school and don't mind waiting to play games, maybe look into using indirect graphics, but in the meantime, perhaps even buy a cheap card and use that till the new GPUs are released. Now there's always going to be this new card that's supposed to be amazing on the horizon. The should I wait game never ends. Modern GPUs will let you do really well from years to come, especially with DX12 games that you'll get more performance out of your hardware. So don't get too caught up on the idea of postponing your build or losing any sleep. It does depend on your situation though. Remember, you could be playing games right now instead of waiting months on end for the new cards to actually be released. Because at the end of the day, it's all about the game. I wonder how many people actually understood that reference. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this week's episode. And next week, I will be getting back on track with the editing series. Hopefully this video helped. And if it did, be sure to smash that like button and comment down below whether you'd like to see more of these less structured but interesting topic videos. This has been Proto, and I'll see you in my next video.